Um, sure. By the way, <laughs> the Eagles gave Jordan Mailata a three-year contract extension, reportedly worth $66 million and $48 million guaranteed, keeping that great offensive line together, but for the fact that Jason Kelsey has retired. But that continues to be one of the tremendous strengths of one of the best teams in be, the right. National Football League, which hopefully can turn around the slide that started last year when Dom DeSandro decided to lay hands on Dre Greenlaw and got banned from the sideline for the rest of the season. And there were some who suggested that his absence prevented Nick Sirianni from doing his job the right way or whatever the story was. But he'll be back next year. The Eagles will be back, and they'll have a chance to right the ship yeah. with Jordan Mailata under contract yeah. for several years to come. Hey, Mailata, I mean, that, that's what you love about the Eagles. I mean, they're, they're forward-thinking they get out in front of things, right, uh, a little quicker than it seems like with most teams. Even with the Landon Dickerson at guard a few weeks ago, right? Paying him, hey, let's he's good. We know it. Let's get out in front now and give him a top-of-the-market type deal so he doesn't become all pro next year, and then we have to make him the highest-paid guy uh, when he's a free agent. You know, And the same thing with Mylotta. Mylotta is that conversation. Mylotta was my first-team all-pro left tackle this year. Uh, he's a special human being. You know, there's just not a lot of guys on the earth that are 6'8", 340-something, can move the way he can move, run blocks, right? They're protecting the strength of their football team. That's one of the things that when you play the Eagles, the first thing you worry about is like, wait, we know they got good skill guys, but like the hell with all that. We're going to get bludgeoned and blown off the ball. We're going to have to do something to stop their offensive line and them overpowering you. So even with the loss of Jason Kelsey, again, the forward thinking, the guys they've drafted the last two years, Cam Jurgens, Landon Dickerson, right? They drafted the other guard out of uh, uh, Tyler Steen last year out of Alabama. So they're going to be just as good this year. That's what's amazing. And, yeah, great deal for him and, you know, great deal for the Eagles. And – it underscores the importance of the offensive line. There was a moment two weeks ago at the league meetings where Jim Harbaugh was talking about the importance of the offensive line. And I swear, some people acted like he was Moses coming down from Mount Sinai with the stone tablets. <laughs> I mean, it, it was a very basic, obvious thing that we talk about all the time, right. how important it is. Your team cannot function if you don't have competent offensive linemen. But because, you know, it's Jim Harbaugh and he's saying it in the Jim Harbaugh way, Locked, cocked, and ready to rock, by the way. That was something he said last week. Wow. Miles and I talked about that. Wow, I haven't Friday. heard that that's one. A new, that's a new saying for the Jim Harbaugh doll with the pull string. Locked, cocked, and ready to rock. So, yes. But uh, offensive line, very important, as we, as we have known. Anybody who has paid any attention to football at any point in their lives knows offensive line is critical, but they get overlooked when a team is doing well because nobody wants to talk about what the offensive line is doing. They want to talk about the quarterback's doing, what the receivers are I, doing, what yeah. the tight end's doing, right. what the running back's right. doing. They can't do any of it without the offensive line. That, and, and, you know, honestly, Mike, I think we're going to age right now. We're going to see it in the draft where I, I'm, I'm not so sure it's not as important as it's ever been, right? We talk about it all season long. The defensive lines are deeper and more talented than the NFL offensive linemen right now. There's not enough good offensive linemen to go around. We see it. I mean, one guy gets hurt in a lot of teams, and we're like, oh, no, they're going to fall apart on the offensive line, right? It's, it's an issue. The, the way college football is being coached and taught and all of that, there's very few that are ready to go and can match kind of the freakiness – of what we got as far as defense alignment in the NFL right now. So when you got some, you got to you got to you got to take advantage of it. And I think that's where we're going to see a lot of them go in the draft because people are going to go, "Wait, this is a good group. This is a group that's like top notch. You know, you can't pass these guys up. This is high quality." And to your point, Mike, with the old line and all that stuff, look at where we are right now. Right. I mean, I think the days of like some team trying to figure it out with an average offensive line is it, it's over in the NFL. Kansas City, the investments they make in the O line. We know the 49ers, one of the best. Oh, the other two teams in the championship game. What? The Lions, gigantic people throughout, right? I mean, we were on the field with them twice this year. We were like, yeah, they could eat us for breakfast. No problem. All right. I mean, the, again, the Ravens, same type of thing. So, you know, there, there's something to be said about that right now. And, and I, I think there's got to be added interest and, and added investment by teams when you got a good one or good ones. You got to keep them for all the reasons you're talking about. And, and that is the one area that kind of blows up the 
fascination with the draft because it does. Yeah, I think it's the intersection of the draft and fantasy football. Yeah, where. Yeah. Linemen. We don't care. Uh, we don't care about linemen. Right. No, 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 no. Take a guy that's going to get right. whatever number of points in this and, oh, and all that, all the stuff that isn't football. The linemen is football, offensive and defensive, but they're not sexy enough. And we don't get excited and we get disappointed. We feel deflated when they draft some guy from Arkansas that nobody's ever heard of before who's going to come in and anchor the offensive line for the next 10 years. That's not exciting because that person doesn't figure into fantasy football. It doesn't figure into any of our prop bets. So we don't care. We don't want to hear it. Please pick the next guy that we'll get all excited about because that person can become, you know, the dice on the on the table at Vegas, the vehicle for our, our wagering. And it's only going to get that's only going to get worse. People are only going to get saltier when offensive linemen are drafted in round one. Yeah, well, they're, they're they better get they better get their salt out cuz or I don't know what 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 do you <laughs> what, what counterbalances salt? I don't know, you know, what what are they what pepper? Are they yeah, I guess so. They better get their pepper out because they better get ready. like this draft from what I'm seeing. Sugar? I'm not done with all of it yet, but Cocaine? offensive linemen and D tackles, there's going to be a lot of them in the in the first round. They're going to see a lot of big people in this one. It's not going to be about that, but yeah. You know, I, 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 you know, I think you, you look at the top three teams in each conference, the Cowboys add them, right? The Buffalo Bills offensive line play is essential. It is. It's, 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 it's uh, not only about protecting your quarterback to let these awesome receivers we got in the league right now work downfield. It's to block, you know, all these great defensive linemen we got right now. And, and the Eagles have certainly figured that out and have the formula. But I think it's maybe more apparent now than ever. I feel like a few years ago, five, six years ago, you might have been able to make a run in the playoffs with like, uh, eh, we're a kind of in-between offensive line type of football team. I feel like now we're in an era right now where the, it's just so many good defensive linemen. You, you can't get away with that anymore. I think you're seeing like the Rams. The Rams are probably the last team to go to the Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl, where you went, eh, that old line, that was just okay, right? You know, but I think they even realized, whoa, we can't live like that anymore. And they've changed. And I think it's going to be a, a thing of the future here for sure, Mike. I just feel like the dopamine rush football fans who, you know, want I want you know, I want the sexy names now, now, now. They'd rather teams address their offensive line needs in free agency. Yeah, yeah. Or the later draft rounds. Is for, right. The draft is for going out there and picking the names that we find exciting yeah. that we need to, you know, that, right. that are going to be I've the been watching him on college our, football. Now he's on our team. Unrelated to the actual winning of a game activities for the next, you know, seven, eight, nine years. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.